uh, that has come down because uh, Thongrim kind of threw something at it. So we have left the party at the Cave of Stars. Uh, again, noted uh, for the the green algae, uh, bioluminescent algae that uh, has grown from the, the ceilings of the cave that provide a, a bluish light uh, to the cave. Uh, as Thongram noted, this was a childhood location that they had come and camped uh, to look at the, the stars as they, as they called it. Um, and he had fond memories of it, uh, so obviously he was a little disturbed when he came into the cave and noticed it was fairly empty. Um, so as, as you guys uh, enter, um, you're going through and uh, you, you saw the spider climb down the wall and start heading towards you. Uh, we do have the several uh, dancing lights that are pro providing illumination. Uh, for what you see there, uh, I did uh, go ahead and put up the um, the fog of war um, because you guys had mentioned that uh, last week. Uh, you do notice that uh, littered throughout the cave there are uh, remains of camping gear and some rotting food. Uh, you do see what look like um, silken pouches uh, um, around the edges of the the the, the cavern. So, any questions uh, or for reminders of this as we go forward? Did you say silken cow? Pouches, pouches, like a, like a giant egg looking thing. Well, not say giant, I mean, but, you know. Kind of, you know, two to three feet. Man sized. Uh, maybe man sized. Uh, you know, they're varying, but we'll we'll say uh, you know man manish sized. Yes. That makes a lot more sense than couches. <laughs> I agree. Couches. Yeah. I wouldn't sit on a silk couch, anyways. I'd probably slide right off, honestly. Well, no, usually because they're made by. By spiders, and I'm not sitting on a spider couch. All right. One second, if you please. While I get my character sheets all up and find where things are, because I forgot to do that, I apologize. Raz, your, per your passive perception is 15, yes? Uh, correct. Can you, uh, roll me a perception check, please. Okay. So, you see in your line of sight a another spider has, uh, crawled down the wall here in the cent uh, towards the center of the cavern. And one second. It has taken its move. And Raz, you are up. Okay. Um, thinking that um, we're about to get surrounded by spiders at any time now, I'm going to start taking a pot shot away, hoping that Siona will protect me from the one in front. Uh, so I'll shoot my hand crossbow at it. All right. Well, that is a uh, hit. Which one are you uh, shooting at? I can't seem to paint for some reason, uh, but the the far spider. The the far one. Okay, gotcha. All right. Well, like I said, that is a hit, and it is 
you know, it's got a big old bolt sticking out of its, uh, you know, thorax area, and it, it seems to have cringed a little bit. With my bonus action, I will pee a little, because I don't like spiders, and I'm done. All right. Uh, Corin, hang on just a tick, please. There's ticks here, too. Yeah, they're giant ticks. They kind of look like spiders. That is Raz up front. Raz, uh, you're, you, you get a, a little bit of a tingling feeling on your, your neck um, as you look up and a spider is crawling down the wall next to you. And it reaches out to bite you with its pinchers right, right next to you. That's me in the front. Oh, then that's Elden. So Elden, yes. Pretend everything I just said was you. Oh, great. You could have just let that go, but no. <laughs> Class 15. Oh, and it misses. Sorry. I'm... One of the things I don't like about roll 20. What happened? Uh, no, you, you, it missed. I'm doing something else. Okay. Is it my turn now? Nope. Nope, not. It is not. It is now, though. All right, I look around. I'm like, guys, why? Why are we just leaving? This, there's, you know, there's a r opening behind us. But seeing Eldon's in combat, I guess I will take a pot shot with my short bow. If I can find my character sheet. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. That is a hit. All right. Uh... So 12, which one are you uh, hitting? Hold oh. on. It's doing the weird stuff. I think it is six plus seven. The, the other six and the three are the crit that it would have been. So it would have been 13. I'm trying to read this. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's the first one is one d six plus three. Then it's got a, a the the second six is just a flat one d six, and the seven is a two d six. That's what it is. Thirteen damage. So the two d six. Okay. So again, which one are you? Uh, which the one, one right next to Elden. Okay. Has that not been adding your PB to it? My what? Your proficiency. Bonus because of your proficiency. You don't get proficiency to damage. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading it wrong. My bad. That spider took a arrow to the uh, to one of its eyes, dropping the spider off the wall in a heap next to Elden. Okay, my bonus action. I want to move. This dancing light out to there, and this one down to there. Roll the. Can you draw the ruler up for me, real quick, please? Where you want to go? Uh, just from the dancing light out to it's, uh, 30 feet, right? Uh, the range is 120 feet. Oh, well then, okay. As long as they're within 20 feet of another light, so. Okay, so it's it's you've basically illuminated the entire area. Then, if it's 120 feet of light. Oh no, you mean the range of the light itself? Yes. No, it's only it's 10 feet. Oh, then they're okay. Well, whatever. Then you have, you've got what you got there. I reveal. Yeah, it's, I reveal too much. It's like 10 feet of dim light. Okay. All right. Well, the the dancing light to the south uh, southern part of the uh, cavern there. Um, this. And I am uh, done. All right, yeah. So that guy, again, reveals one of those spidery 
uh, silky pouch thingies near it. Alrighty. Is it, it is a 10 foot radius, so I guess that's. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought it was 30, though, so I, that's why I expanded as much as I did the first time. So, but once it's there, it's there, so whatever. Alright, I'm done. Alright, uh, it's almost Elden's turn. Are we at the. I'm actually forgotten. Are we at the end of the same day that I've already given a sample? Yes, you are at the uh, end of that day, so everybody should still have that uh, uh, bon the, the bonus five points that you gave at the end of the last session. Okay. So Eldon looks like a, a tasty morsel as yet another spider climbs down right next to him and attempts to attempts to take away take him away and bite at him. And so he had stealth, so how does that work again? Would that have given him advantage on the attack because he would not have seen him? I believe that's how it works. I'm not I don't think I get it, but I don't really know. Alright. I will not take a long Actually no. It does, it does, because that's how I get my sneak attack. So yeah, it does give advantage. Okay. Seeing the thing climb down, I go, Little friend, look out! Hopefully disrupting this spider. Alright, so the, he hit a 16, and you're doing a Cutting Wars for 5. That takes 5 off of the uh, attack. Yes? So that'd be 16 minus 5? Yep. Okay. Then uh, I'm assuming that is a miss. And so I duck and get even more small. Let me add these guys to the list real quick. This guy here. There. Game is there. I screwed up the initiative. That's better than you deleting everything. Last I, I know that says great, right? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try not to do that again. Elden, you are a little small ball of person. There, it is your turn. Oh, what do I do? Um. Oh, well, I guess I'll I'll, I'll I'll start off with this. I will bless our, our army. Um, so that's uh, the standard Siona, Thongrim, and Corin. And I guess you can't, you, the move is just a move. You can't do like defense, you know, just stand defensive. As the part of, as the move, that's an action, right? I believe it was. You could like ready a dodge or something. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to move because I don't want to give it an opportunity attack. Um, but I'll, you can't dodge because that would also be an action. Right, right. So I guess my my bless is my move. My bless is what I do, and then I'm just going to. Um, Unless you wanted to disengage and not do the blessing, then you could move without... Uh... No, I'd rather get these guys buffed um, okay. so that they can get rid of these spiders who are now apparently thinking I'm, you know, easy game because I'm small. So I'm just going to, you know, hide under my shield. Uh... All right. And Thongrim, I don't see his... He's actually underneath you somehow. There we go. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> see, 
not being uh, aligned. No, he was off grid like usual. As he is now. Uh, yes. All right. So, Siona, you're out. You're kind of at the mouth of the cave. There, kind of peering in. Yeah, I'm standing there thinking about how we could just walk out of the cave. But I'll close with the spider and take a stab at him because he's gross. And that is a miss. She's using bless. Ah. Is a hit. Thirteen damage. Eleven damage. You didn't have Hunter's Mark. Eleven damage. Okay, one second. It is bleeding, but not uh, not dead. Spider blood. Ew. Spider blood is icky. Hello, Ash. You are not in front of your computer, yes? Sorry, I didn't mean to click that. Test, test, test. We can hear you. I am here, then. All right, you see a spider skittering in along the ceiling uh, from the far side. This spider was trying to be stealthy, but just it's just clicketing, clacketing all the way. Uh, you, you mean you can hear it throughout the cave. And that was its turn. Ah, the spider that uh, Thongram threw a threw a javelin at is uh, gonna. It's starting to skitter up here, and. Seeing as that it, the way the map works, um, we're going to get rid of this dead one. New spider is coming up and it's again going to... Yes, red dots are bless. Uh, this spider is going to come up and again try to uh, chow down on Mr. Eldon. I think that's a hit. I guess I'm just staying too still at the moment. So, you need to make a DC 11 Constitution saving throw. So you don't take the poison damage, uh, but you do take six piercing damage. He takes half poison damage. Is it half? Yeah, yes, half. Half, 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 yes. Make sure I wrote everything down, because there was something about the... Half round down? It yes, half round. round. I'll be back yeah. in just a minute, sorry. You're up. Yeah, so, yes, rounding down, so... So eight, eight eight damage, yes. Ouch. Okay, so that takes us to Thongram, who is just walked away. Um, seeing as how everybody is, I have a feeling he would have gotten to the front and start swinging. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I mean, he should just be able to run up in between these two, right? Yeah, I think you can pass between people, and diagonals are weird. Yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to figure out from the, the bottleneck there. But I would imagine Thongram looking at this is going, Oh, look at the spider! Trying to get all bitey-bitey with him. So, Thongram... 
Let me pull up his character sheet. Raz, what do you think Thongram would say right about now? Chris, what do you think he'd say? Spider X! Spider X! Friendly neighborhood Spider X! And he just swings his X. All right, that's what I was thinking. Something along that line. So the giant wolf spider attacks itself with a great axe. <laughs> and that would be a hit. For seven. The great axe uh, chops down and carves a great gash into the thorax of this spider and it winces but it's you know it's it's hurting quite a bit but not out for the count so so we're coming around the end we got a another spider skittering down go ahead Was somebody saying something? Uh, not anything. Okay. All right. So the first the spider that Raz shot earlier is skitters for and attempts to bite at Thongram. I right, back sorry. Well, Thongram just uh, uh, did a mighty blow at one of the spiders. Um, and uh, another spider just tried to take a bite out of the, out of you, and uh, just you know couldn't get through your 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 Minotaur's helmet. So you got these uh, spiders flanking you on all, on three three sides there, but no damage. Okay. Dead dead spider, out of initiative. Raz is up. Um. So I know about the one that uh, Thunkram hits, which is the one above him, right? Correct. And then the one that was to, and the one that was to the right of him is the one to the left of him, the one that Siona hit with their sword. Yes. Okay, uh, I will move up adjacent to Siona and start doing a little fitting with my rapier at the one that Siona hit. All right. That is a hit. Would you like to tell us how you have dispatched this giant wolf spider? I dry the urine off the front of my pants and go, ha <laughs> ha! And then I take a step back five feet because I'm not as courageous as I think I am. All right. And I'm done. Okay. Give me a second. So behind Thongram, uh, kind of looking overhead, yet another spider starts creeping down um, stealthily, we'll say. So this will be with advantage. Drops down behind Thongram and bites, will attempt to bite him. with surprise and malice and fear and surprise. So 19 would be a hit unless something else happens. No, nope. that's it. Well, yeah, I don't have, you can't roll bless, blesses only on attack, so you're good. Yeah, I just didn't know if there was a cutting words or anything coming. I am out of them. Wait, did we take a short rest? No, we were the spiders. We were... No, there there was a short rest after the um, after the mountain pass. Uh, you did take a little bit of a short rest. Yes, a, a short rest because I remember people uh, using hit die. Okay, so I still don't get my okay. Yeah, we um, have not taken a long rest. Nothing happens. So Thongram needs to do a DC 11 constitution test, saving throw. All 
All right, so you take 17 damage. Dwarf still, he still takes half from poison. Yes, you and you, Dan, yeah, oh, yes. Is that nine or eight? Seven plus five, 12. Yeah, you're right, we, we did not do the rage. I forgot about that. Strongrim can roll a um, d4 for the save, though. He doesn't need to save. He takes half damage from all poison. Yeah, that. Yeah, he's. Either way, oh. this. Yeah, th this would be the same same impact. He wouldn't take half of half. No, only one resistance works. Oh, gotcha. No, actually, no. I take that back. Yeah, he still gets to throw a save. It's just it's half damage, and then he gets to throw a save. Yeah, you're right. He would have half that, so he should yeah. roll a d4 because he doesn't have advantage. Does he? No, he doesn't have advantage. Yeah, go Actually, ahead and roll no. that. Yep, that's what we want you to do. <laughs> oh, all right. There you go. So two, ten damage. Get two back. That'd be nine damage. Uh, Dwarven Re Resilient says you have the advantage on saving throws against poison. Is that counting against poison damage? Yeah, so apparently Thonker just go ahead and takes a quarter damage from all poison. <laughs> well, every time I'm poisoned, I get ten hit points. Let's not, let's not go that far. We'll say five. Let, let's, let's just keep on talking. At some point, you get poisoned, you win the game, right? <laughs> every time I get poisoned, they die. <laughs> <laughs> and we all level up. <laughs> I'm not sure if, if poison damage with the attack counts as like a poison effect. So Just he, FYI. All right, so he would have gotten advantage, so 19, and he would have taken half. And then on this, he would have had resistance against the poison damage, which we're saying at this point would have halved it again. So that would be two and a half rolled down, which would be two. So going back and looking at the ammo, so seven plus two, yes, nine damage. Oh, yeah. Square All right. Away. Clear as mud, everybody. All right. Let me make sure I've got. All right. So that this guy needs to be added to the to the initiative order here now. as he is no longer stealthy. So that spider went. Corn, you are up. All right, I am going to attack that new spider just to the south of Thongrim with my short bow. And I am going to roll 1d4. So 13. 9 plus 4 is 13, and that is a hit. So 14 damage. Bless is really working this fight. I know. So this wee little spider who inflicted some damage on the dwarf could not withstand your thing, and he's just going to take... One slot of icons. <laughs> his one slot of icons here. And die, because he just couldn't handle all of the icons. All right, and then I'm just going to end my turn here, trying to keep an eye out for more freaking spiders. In almost a surprisingly repeat uh, action, you've... Yet another spider skitters down behind Thongram and attempts to bite him again, not learning from the mistakes of the other one, but sees a tasty morsel of a minotaur-looking thing with horns and wants to chew on it. So we're going to just say yeah, that's a hit. Yep. Yeah. For eight damage. It's not even gonna bother having him roll. 
Nope. Because <laughs> I know how that works at this point. <laughs> it's it's the day him being nice to us because we both forgot to rage him. <coughs> okay. Okay. Boy, these spiders are getting the best of me. I'm going to get rid of this spider as well. Eldon, you are up. Um, I am going to... Uh, call upon the light of the sacred flame on the guy in front of me. This guy right here that already bit me. All right, so he needs to do dexterity save. Great. Through the surprise of nobody. And I'm going to use my bonus action to cast a shield of faith upon Thongrimitar. And that will be my turn. Okay, plus two AC. Got you. That's what that little icon is, is your little shield. Mm, mm, bacon shield. Mmm, tasty bacon shield. Siona, what would you like to do? I'm going to pretend like the spider's still there, and I want to climb over its body and take an overhand strike to try to separate the spider's head from its body. From its thorax. All right. Well, that is a hit. Did you do the hunter's I mark? Did it. I did it. Wait, you did? No, it just automatically. Puts okay. There. All right. So just uh, eleven. Yeah, eleven damage. While the uh, the. The spider's head still remains connected uh, to its thorax. It is uh, somewhat damaged and bloodied. There is quite a gash in there. Is spider ick pouring out of it, and it is uh, uh, it is making sounds like a hurt spider would make. I'm not sure what that sounds like, but use your imagination, and that's what it's doing right now. Yum. That's all for me. All right. Well, Klutzy the spider back here in the middle is going to continue skittering its way along the ceiling, just clackety clacking along. Still thinking it's super stealthy. It's trying to hide over here by this pillar. You know, it's it's eventually thinking it's going to sneak up and take that bacon shield to task. But it's it's hiding there or so it thinks. So the spider next to Elden is turned around and it's it's looking at the tasty at what he thinks is a tasty mortal. It's got a morsel and it's going to uh, attempt to chow down on on Elden. That is, if I can click the button. That would be a miss. Angram. I, I will rage. And I will attack this one north of me. Okay. I have it on my sheet, but I can't seem to click it for some reason. Yeah, click rage is not probably not one of those things. Is it in your uh, feature? Oh, that's the one I need to do. I've added some of those as actions to mine. I have it in the uh, 
sidebar here. I just couldn't figure out how to click right. it. So that's not advantage on the attack. That's an 11 and... That spider did not get hit. It was a miss. I think, I think my bless might be off now that it's not being concentrated on. Oh, all right. Well, well, then it's even more of a miss. Wait, who's... What? What? Shield of Faith. So yeah, I'll Shield of Faith, so Bless time. goes away, yes. It does? Oh, crap. Sorry. No, sorry. Um, miss are all around. Um, let's see... Is there any bonus action I have to do a heal? Do you have the bonus duration? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, then I'm good. Okay. We still should. I mean, some uh, there should be some potions somewhere. Those are full actions to drink, though. Right. So Spider B still wants to, you know, is still hungry, as spiders are wont to be, and will attempt to eat Thongram again. Ah, uh, miss! Ah! And the spider will go hungry for another round. Raz, how do you choose to respond to the shenanigans? I take a little piece of rusty metal, light it like flint over my and purple sparks fly out in front of me in a 20-foot cube, and I do fairy fire in this cube here, which, which unfortunately affects the Ongram. All right, so you want me to draw a box. All right. <laughs> Do it again. Right there. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, theory fire, every... Everything is a, everything that attacks those affected people gets it with advantage. So the spiders could have, have advantage on Thongram. Yes. Yeah, if he fails. Okay. Okie dokie. Nice. So, dexterity save. The one north of Thongram saves. The one to the east of Thongram saves. Of course they do. The one to the south of Thongram does not, and it is a glittery mess. He's like, hey, do you like this body glitter? We'll make him pink. And with my bonus action, I cast Healing Word on Thongram, because it can't save again. It's Yay! All right. And I'll stay where I am. Corin. All right. I am going to... Let's see. I don't... Do I have a clear... I don't have to have a clear shot to that south one, do I? Uh, any of them. 
there's there's people in the way. All right. Well, all the, so the the south one, oh, that one's almost dead. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a risk it and take a shot at that guy. I'm assuming the, that's going to bypass any cover he has from Eldon. Yeah, that cover would have been, you know, inconsequential to those rolls. So go ahead and that's a hit. So that's another 15 damage. You have dispatched that spider. All right, well, I'm going to remain vigilant for more spiders and stand here. <laughs> All right, so the spider south of Thongram uh, is going to attempt to chow down once more on the tasty, tasty dwarf. You do add your spellcasting modifier, Raz. Yeah, yeah, he does. Miss, he gets knocked. Eldon, you are up. Had to make sure. You got he How'd you get healing work? Did, was that the um our the feet? No, I just took it as a spell. I level four. I haven't used it much though. Oh. Okay. Cool. It's, it's basically for if you drop. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, my stunned concentration mistake. Uh, thank you for... I, I say thank you for getting rid of that guy. Um, and then I'm going to... Is it the guy? Well, I don't get anything that has advantage. So I'll just, uh, again, cast my Sacred Flame on the one um, to the right of Thongrim. Um, okay. Uh, Ooh. He did not get out of the way in time, and he takes six damage. So... How would you prefer your spider cooked? Would you like it flambé or baked? Oh, I think from the inside out. <laughs> he did. He makes the sound a dead spider makes when it dies. And, uh... In my... Oh, I guess I'm, I'm not going to... I'm going to stay, not move. So that's my turn. Okie dokie. So, Yona, would you like to in, add insult to the spider's injuries here? Yep, I'm going to take another swing. With advantage, if you please. Stomp, his, stomp him with the boot. That is a hit. Seven. So, Siona manages to finish the job she started last round by cleaving the spider's head from its body. And it decapitation. Decapitation! And so the spider falls limply to the floor. And I can see that other spider right out here. Oh yes, everybody can see that spider. It just thinks it's completely hidden. So I'll just go ahead and close with it. And I'll end my turn. Okay. So the spider gets that hungry glimpse in his eye and looks down like, Yes! My, fe my feast has come to me! And jumps down and tries to bite Siona. We're missing a red X, right? We are. Aha! And so the spider jumps down 
and misses Siona completely. Longrim. I will move. And hit this one as well. That would be a hit. Would you like to tell us what you did to this poor little dense spider? I will probably just continue to hack at it and scream spider. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's dead. And if my math is correct, because I did get all sorts of uh, messed up in my orders on things, you all seem to have killed all the spiders. Which earns you... your echoey fanfare. So, you have dead spider carcasses around, and what would y'all like to do? I sort of moved north and as I get my breath back, I put my hand out and sort of rest on this silky, comfortable thing above me. Warily look around while he's wandering. I'm going to stay here and guard the door. For You guys have fun with whatever spiders are left. I'm going to light a torch, and I want to go south to this one, and I want to start cutting it open. Okay, so... But I have a torch. Okay, you have a torch, but first... So Raz puts his hand on that that squishy looking thing up there, and you know notices it's kind of kind of got some hard lumpy parts to it. So a little squishy, uh, you know. It kind of smells like like something died in there. Uh, so you know you went down there and you started slicing open the one with your not with your torch held high, and uh, so you were cutting into it, right? Yes. Me? Yes. Yes, you. Okay. So as you start slicing into it, you as your as the blade pierces the the, the pouch, the sack-like pouch, uh, the this disgusting like oozy bile mess starts just pouring out of the sack, um, and it just starts to burst open at your feet, and just this. This gr gross, reddish, stinking, decaying mass of flesh and bone pour out of this sack. Okay. I'm going to go to another one. <laughs> okay. Anything I'm going to go to that one and cut it open. Anything metal fall out of it? There might have been some... Somebody want to check behind <laughs> me as I, as I uh, slice these open? Yeah, let's just go ahead and reveal the map at this point because that's well, they're going to find it anyway I'm still warily looking around okay so uh, she starts slicing some things open and uh, give me one second most all of them are filled with bloody, gutty stuff. But I need to find something else out for Siona. Hey, Corin. Yeah? There's something back here. That's great. 
Sorry. Um, if you bring it back to me, I'll look at it for you. I guess I'm yelling pretty loud. That's 70 feet, right? Yeah, I mean, you're, 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 that's a, yeah, a pretty large yell. So, um, in one of the, uh, the sacks that, uh, Siona, uh, bursts open, uh, you, you, there's a little bit of a leather sack that comes out with, uh, attached to like a, a, a shoddy looking belt, uh, that has some, kind of some soupy looking pink, pink in it, pink rock. It, it looks like it'd be salt, uh, if I were you, I probably wouldn't take that. If I were you, you but, wouldn't? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could, but... Is this... Who's telling us? I'm, t I'm telling you. The, the voice from above. <laughs> probably shouldn't take that. I'm going to leave it here. But what does it taste like? I throw it to you. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, roll me a dexterity check there, <laughs> Raz. Let's see if you catch it. Is it between... Well, I'm, I'm still resting. I, I haven't seen Siona, you know, do any of this, so I, I don't know what's in these sacks. So, yeah, okay. So, so he's what, would you say dexterity saving throw? No, no, a dexterity check. We're going to see if you can catch this <laughs> leather bag oh, okay. full of... Throwing it where she's at? Like through the stone. Well, I'm announcing what I find, and you said, "Was it tastes like?" So I threw it to you. So you moved up and threw it around the rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you you managed to catch this leather pouch full of this pinkish, pinkish f sludge. It looks like at one point it may have been salt. So it's like that was a uh, chase a little salty. Ew. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I wouldn't eat it. <laughs> so is that all I find in I, all of them? You also find an uh, ivory bottle stopper uh, in the shape of a long-haired woman, and uh, some. Uh, surprisingly enough, you find about fifty copper pieces overall, because you know that's a thing at this point. Um, about five or six gold, we'll say five, uh, six, we'll say six gold on that, and uh, two daggers uh, through all of this, uh, and a bunch of other sundry bones and of creatures, both gnomish and uh, dwarven. Uh, it looks like you see some human femurs pop out there. Um, so lots of viscera. It's kind of you know, it's spider sex. I mean, that's, they they gotta eat, right? Okay, I'm going to go to the chest after I make a little pile for, you know, I'm going to bring all that junk back over here for inventory, and then I'm going to go back to the chest. What is the giant wall spider saying? That is everything that you found. Is there anything in the bottle? Nope. So, Thongram, while you're milking the spider, do me a nature check, please, sir. How's it going in there, guys? Anybody need any guidance for anything? Make sure they let me know. So we'll what does say, that do again? Any for skills. ability check, you get a 1d4 bonus. I mean, I'm about to do probably a check for traps, which I'm not super great at. Okay. If that would do anything. So I have to be within range. Well, Thongram, you're going to get... Uh, 
you know you didn't you didn't do great on on this but you still managed to get uh, say about a quarter ounce of of uh, venom out of that spider and Siona you are checking for traps over there is that what I heard is that perception uh, it is Am I getting guidance? Yes. Okay. So. Woo. <laughs> Woo! That's some high school guidance council guidance. <laughs> um, so you don't see, uh, you don't see any traps. So you, you look around, feel around, don't see any obvious latches or anything seems to be uh, your your run-of-the-mill standard chest I try to open the chest the chest opens I look inside you see stuff hang on let me <laughs> and stuff in there it is so in the in the chest um, and he's going to say this slowly because he's certain somebody's going to be writing this down on the other end. <coughs> <clears throat> exactly. So there is your standard coinage uh, in this uh, in this chest. There will be 280 copper. Uh, there's 150 silver, 40 gold, and you have a couple of gemstones each worth. Uh, we're just going to tell you it's worth 50 gold each. You have two stones of jasper, one zircon, and one quartz. You also see a few other items uh, down uh, at the bottom of this chest. Uh, there is a ring, a staff, and some form of belt. Looks like Eldon's going to be doing some work. Exactly. No, we, we can all do that. Of course, we can all just sit and concentrate on things, right? Yeah. But, yeah, kind of weird. So, you've looked around uh, and explored the extent of this cave, uh, and outside of the uh, gooey viscera that has now sludged all over portions of the the bluey the bluish hazed um, cave and all this it does not appear that there are any other uh, enemies or creatures uh, there are some you know spider webs uh, you know around the place but it seems like at this point it's a fairly secure location as you are the only living people of creatures within the cave Well, the only way to be sure is with fire. So those pouches, are they likely to have been people? Is that what we, what the bones and things yeah. would tell us? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're... Sorry. We don't see any, like, egg sacs or anything, do we? No, there, there, there are no uh, egg sacs or anything. Uh, the, so through the viscera, there, there, like I said, uh, there are some human femur-looking bones. There were some gnomish-looking remains. Uh, some dwarven bones and some other sundry, uh, you know, creatures, uh, but not, you know, the, uh, in varying states of decay, decay and you know, bonish, whatevers. You can hear my medical background is really coming through. So I say we set it on fire and we get the heck out of here. <laughs> Because all this web, it'll burn pretty good. Maybe it'll be a discouragement for spiders. I mean, the people in those in those pouches thought it was secure, too. I don't think we should stay here. Is there only one way in and out? There is. Well, where were those spiders on the ceiling coming from? Were they in, like, holes or something? Because we had light coming in, and we didn't see them. And the ceiling was kind of glowing, right? Right. 
Uh, they were skittering in, um, I'll tell you, they were skittering in from around the cave. Uh, they were all stealthed, with the exception of the one who thought he was stealthed. Gotcha. And yeah, there. I mean, there was a there method. Uh, there was a method to the madness there. I can uh, cast an alarm on the entrance to um, to give us a safe place for a long rest, since that's what we were originally coming up here for. I set the thing next to me on fire. All right, it's going to get smoky in here. Well, and I just start walking around and setting all the webs on fire and all the egg things on fire. As you fire. burn flowers that Elvin has cast out. <laughs> I burn what? That's to rest the uh, the souls of those who died. In it the was house. a gesture that counts. I set it all on fire. Everybody yeah. start moving to the entrance. Fight all right. Roll. So, all right. So, as you light the fire. Dark plumes of smoke start filling and... We're all going to die. <laughs> Get out! Run! Get out of the cave! I, I would wonder how Thongram felt about his childhood campground just kind of going up I'm in smoke. I'm cleaning it out. We'll come clean it later. Get out. It's the only way to be sure. Thank you. We're carrying all the goods. Yeah. Hold on, Mage Hand. Who's using Mage Hand for what? I was using Mage Hand to torch the ceiling with a torch. Great. Alright, we're out. Don't grow, get out. Alright, I'm getting out. I'm trying to see. Is that what you would put on there? Does that seem right for everybody? I mean, I guess you would cast it if you did a hit. Once you apply, I don't know how to apply something and have it go on a weapon, so I think you would just basically do an attack. If the attack hits, you would then roll this basically, right? Yeah, that's I guess what I would assume. I would say yes. Okay, so shit's on fire. There's big, blacks billowing smoke that catches and comes wafting out of the out of the cut you know, cavern entrance, uh, obscuring the blue light from the um, emitting from the algae up, upstairs. Um, you know the the webs and everything they go up, and it's you know it's kind of like a flash fire. You know. Not yet, not like yet a backdraft moment, but everybody has made it out of the cave relatively unscathed. Since Thongrim was taking his time, he's one of the ones who's going to walk away like in slow motion as the cave sets a fire behind him. And he tries to make this movement like he's putting some form of glasses over his, over his, uh, the eye sockets of his helmet, but realizes he doesn't have anything and he just walks forward like nothing has happened. So congratulations, you've cleared the cave and set the damn thing ablaze. All right. I think we need to find a place for a long rest, though. Maybe a place with no ceilings. Can we just camp in the front of it? Outside right. where the air is clean. Outside where the air is clean? With the smoke pouring out? <laughs> the air's fine. Well, the smoke probably drove away any other, you know, insect-like creatures, so. Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, uh, you wanted to sleep in a cave with rotting bodies in it, but, you know, the flames are bad. It's probably warm in there now. Ew. <laughs> and moist. Stop. We're leaving. <laughs> warm, moist, and on fire. My favorite place to sleep. <laughs> so, Thongram, what you doing over there, buddy? Uh, I was... I thought someone said camp, sorry. Well, no, we're, we're finding a place nearby to camp. At a range of the smell. Yeah, Thongram, you're... Oh, you're Up wind. You've been... As they say. This is an area you know, so hopefully we can find something better than a a spider-infested cave to uh, camp? Well, there's probably camp remnants around the outside of the cave, so it probably wouldn't be too hard to find a ring of rocks, you know, a fire ring or something around there. So who's the adventury one of us? 
So that would be a, yeah, who's got the uh, survival, uh, the best survival skill? Um, plus three. That's um, the same and proficient. Minus one. Well, then Just one. somebody roll me one of those checks there. Oh, that was a dwarf low in survival. Because I have no wisdom. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> So in character. So Siona uses her. Is mag- that an ability check that I would be able to boost with guidance? Yes, you could. Okay, pretty I sure a twenty is going to win, though. I don't think it really matters, but you could. No, I just, I'm just trying to I'm trying to figure out how your thing works. Yeah. Aren't we all? <laughs> I think everything except for saving throws and attack rolls are ability checks. So, Siona so scouts around the, the outskirts of the cave, which is off the road. Uh, it's getting a little dark outside. As you recall, uh, we entered the cave um, as the sun was setting. So she's looking around and she um, does manage to find the remnants of an old campground. Um, you know, you see little rocks where burnt out an old burnt out campfire was. It's a little off the ways from the road, and it is, um, you know, like we we were looking for downwind from the cave. So, you uh, you find a place that you think that you can uh, fortify for the evening if you so choose. Well, as good as place as any. Are we gonna take? Up, uh, watch order. Unless you, unless you want to be warned, to someone stands next to you and stabs you. Well, I, the, yeah, this, the main thing on something like this is I can it, it sets an alarm that can wake everybody up if something. So it adds a little bit of extra protection against surprise. I would guess it's not a very big area though, twenty by twenty. Sure, I'll take first. Well, I usually take the morning to do my meditation and watch at the same time. So who's taking second and third? I'll take last since I need light to see. Oh, okay. Thanks. Whatever's left. So Eldon said he was going to take the fourth one. So Eldon, you okay taking the third? Well, there. Are we taking just four watches or five watches? That's how I had it set up. Is I mean, eight hours would be overnight for, you know, your call. I was thinking four. I can do third watch. It doesn't matter. Okay, the four of you, throw me a perception checks, please. And, uh, oh, I guess I'll be asleep during this, so I can't really do guidance for people, right? Except I can guidance myself, right? Yes, but with a 21, not really sure that matters. Yeah, yeah. All right, discuss amongst yourselves what y'all are going to do. Give me a moment. Okay, I've got to rejigger my spells. We'll be practicing the lyrics of the verses. That were sung in the Tavern X back in Aldernburg by Bard Y. Because I don't have my notes on me, not in the Bard. I'll keep singing that song and practicing. I want to clean all the spider gunk off my sword and sharpen it and meditate. Before I go to sleep. Since apparently I'm not doing a watch, which is great. I'll just try to keep watch playing with, you know, tossing my daggers in the air or something to keep myself from falling asleep. What's the recovery for, is it just full recovery for hit points? Yeah. Yes. And half your hit dice. Oh, okay. Or half your max hit dice. Yeah, I I
I'm working on it. Give me a second. I was so worried about falling asleep that I ended up staying completely awake to the point where I almost could not fall asleep after my shift was over. This is a full reset, right? Basically. Except for hit dice. You only get half your max hit dice back. Everything else is full. Yeah. Yes, provided that everybody gets a full eight hours of sleep, right? Uh, you can take a watch and still get the full rest. But, uh, no, yeah, no, I, I got that point. Yeah, so yeah, you, as long as you don't do anything strenuous over eight hours and you sleep. Or you're an elf and only get have to take half that time. But everybody loses the uh, the aid spell that five extra hit points. Okay, so the course of the evening, um, as you go through, the, Raz uh, takes the first watch, and uh, you know people start, uh, you know they they're dozing off, they're going to sleep. Um, there's not much. You hear the hooting of the owls. You hear some stuff rustling in the in the in the wind, um, and you start hearing. There's a bit of this uh, thunder coming uh, over the hills from a from a passing storm, uh, but nothing that seems to to wake the rest of the the, the team uh, of the party. Uh, Thangram, um, you know, managed to fall us. Um, managed to do what he did there because I wasn't really listening. Uh, but he did his stuff, and he, as he's sitting there watching and he's twiddling around, making sure that he's awake. He, he's noticing that you know some of the other party are, are um, you know, having you know, looks like they're having fitful bets of uh, of sleep, uh, or at least you know some vivid dreaming. Uh, Siona on the on the part is obvious is. Uh, She's, you know, writhing a little bit in what seems to be a bit of a nightmare. Um, you know, uh, so I'm not sure if Thongrim would want to try to wake her or just, you know, make sure that she doesn't hurt herself. How, uh, um, how bad is the dream? Like, is she screaming, no, 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 or is it just like, rah, rah. Uh, she's holding on to her chest, kind of like, sh you know, kind of moaning in, in pain. Uh, so she is, uh, she's having a, a, hell, a, a hell of a nightmare. Then yeah, I'd probably give her a shake. So you, you shake Siona awake. Um, so, Lindsay, if you would, join me over in the DM channel. Okay. So, uh, Siona had a, a nightmare of a dream, um, and this is what you dreamt, and I'll let you play it how you will. Uh, so you dreamt of a burning pain in your chest. Uh, you left, uh, you look at your shirt to find a huge hole in, in your chest that is full of a burning ball of moss and twigs. So inside of, you know, you have this strange, obviously frightening dream of this big burning ball of fire in your chest. Okay. Okay. So do with that as you will. Um, and we'll head back to the channel. Okay. Okay. When you click initiative, it does it for you automatically. Yeah, that's some of that. And we're back. So Sienna was shaken awake by Thongram. Hi, girl. You be having a nightmare, it seems. Screaming, clutching your chest. You all right? Um, uh... I think I'm okay. It must have just been uh, heartburn. <laughs> My chest was freely hurting. It was like on fire. I I'm I'm just gonna chalk it up to whatever I had for dinner. 
Roger, I get heartburn. I always take a swig of this. Here, Lassie. I take a drink of whatever he offered me. Basically, backroom swill moonshine. I choke. <laughs> it doesn't really help with the heartburn, but it burns so bad you kind of don't realize you have it anymore. After I can breathe again, I take another drink. Thank you. Thanks for waking me up. Anytime. I've got another few minutes here. I'll kind of watch over you. I'll let the next guy know to keep an eye on you as well. I lay back down and try to go back to sleep. Okay. So, I'm not good. Go ahead. Items. Can I concentrate on items and do identified while doing watch, or is that too much concentration issue? Between watching and identifying items. Honestly, I'd let it slide. Because, yeah, that's what I would want to do during my watch, is kind of look, uh, look over the items. Okay. So, you spend your time communing with the items and identifying those. Um, the rest of the evening really uh, manages to pass without much um, without much ado. Uh, there was, uh, uh, Corin noticed in the early morning hours, there were some travelers uh, getting an, a head start down the road. You can kind of see it from your vantage point off uh, behind the caverns there, uh, but nothing that seemed alarming. So, in the morning, everybody wakes up. Most everybody is uh, fully rested. Siona had a little bit of a, a, a jolt there, um, but nothing you know that causes exhaustion or anything due to uh, Thongrim's actions. We'll get to Eldon's discoveries in just a second. So Eldon took time e evaluating the uh, the items that were found in the chest from the now burnt out cavern, which is now you know the smoke has cleared and everything is kind of you can still see a little smoke, but it's pretty much out. Um, so the first item that he identified, he spent some time with the belt and discovered that it was uh, what is known as an adroit belt, and I will put that out there for you. This adroit belt is an uncommon item that uh, whoever wears this belt is granted a, one, a plus one bonus to intelligence saving throws. The second item, go ahead. Okay, so the second item that he spent time looking at was the ring and identified it as a ring of swimming, which grants the wearer a swimming speed of 40 feet. The third item, the staff, was of particular interest to, uh, to Eldon. Uh, he, uh, uh, since he is a cleric, he was able to actually identify this as the, a staff of the adder. Um, this staff allows the the uh, the, where, uh, the wielder a bonus action to speak the staff's command word, which makes the head of the staff become that of an animate poisonous snake for one minute. And by using another bonus action to speak the command word again, you return this staff to its normal inanimate form. Uh, let me. So as uh, at once it's in its uh, snake form, you can make a melee attack using the snake head which has a reach of five feet, and your proficiency bonus applies to that attack roll. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I will, let me copy this and put it out there for you guys. So y'all can discuss what he found while I do that. Probably better than this useless club I carry around. Although Eldon wonders if Thong Grimitar is, is uh, Averse to snakes. I mean, not. 
I don't know. There's a good chance. Trying to get my notes up on this screen here. We are back two seconds. Would uh, would Raz be interested in this belt, or would anybody be interested in this belt? I mean, I don't need it. Who has the lowest intelligence saving throw? Probably not me. I guess the daggers weren't anything special. They were run-of-the-mill daggers. Let's get back. Attunement. I just read something about that. I mean, I only have an intelligence of 10, so I have a zero modifier. I guess that would be something. What does Songrum have? I have a one on intelligence. You're smarter than me. Yeah, but I don't know it. That's the problem. Because <laughs> he's not, he doesn't have very big, good wisdom. Oh, okay, I have a higher wisdom. He's only got average wisdom. He's like Goodwill Hudson over there. I'll hand the, the belt to... Unless it'd be better for somebody that has a strong intelligence to just have a plus one. I don't know. To go even higher. Yeah. Well, in case of the one spell of a thousand that actually uses intelligence saving throws, I don't think it matters much. I mean, I'm immune to... I have advantage on being like charmed and um, I can't be put to sleep. That would be intelligence saving, wouldn't it? That would be wisdom or charisma. What do you do intelligence saving throws for? Very little. It's... I want to say it's like this. Maybe it's illusions. Isn't it? Yeah. Wait a minute. What's my suggestion? So have y'all made any movement on divvying out these things. I mean, it doesn't sound like I need the belt if there's not a lot of intelligence saving throws. I mean, better you than somebody. If you have a zero, might as well take it. Okay. I take the belt unless somebody else wants it. Seems like the staff is good for you, Eldon. It seems so. Considering I don't use the club that I carry. You have a shield? I have a shield, yeah. So does, you probably can't carry it and use the staff. Is it a sink? Oh, is it two handed? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't think it was. I'll check. Hang on. Quarter stabs are weird in d, &D. I think they're one handed weapons. And just quote staff unquote is like a focus and not an actual weapon. What is that again? There's like a quarter staff, which, which is an actual, you know, simple weapon or marker. And then there's an actual staff, which is just like a spell casting focus, which is not considered a weapon. But when you use this one <clears throat> to uh, to become it, then the, the staff of the head, the snake head, becomes that melee attack. I mean, my intent of it was to be a, a single hand of something that I, you know, that I was imagining he could hold it there. Unless it says otherwise, a staff can be used as a quarter staff, but isn't necessarily a quarter staff. So if you and want some to, quarter steps are versatile, can be used with one or two hands. Which to me is weird, but you know, yeah. Like I said, he's not going to be doing a lot of attacks with it. He's got that magic property on it anyways. Well, this is a better attack than... So, in that, like in that last fight, since I had a spider within range, I, I still use the... 
the Sacred Flame instead, but I, this has better attack than both Sacred Flame and my club, so. Take it. Yeah. Not, not, not like the rest of us are going to need it. And right now, he's the only one who can actually use it, unless we had a Warlock or a Druid. Yeah, there's also that. Yeah, well, everybody else, it would just be a plain staff, so. All right, then. So, use it. Don't use it. You have it. Could be fun. Who knows? All righty. I will um, build it. My next rest, it looks like. But the attunement costs a short rest, and I probably wouldn't have done that while I was on watch. No, you were uh, busy identifying things at that point. Yeah. And same goes for... I think the the belt, but oh, not the belt. The, the, oh, belt the belt requires attunement. Um, the ring does not. Anybody like swimming? Well, Siona's the aquatic one. I mean, she swims we, like a fish. We all just hold on to it when it, when we come down to it. You know, that's yeah, something that we would. I guess get out of the bag when we needed it, or somebody just take it. Turn Elden into a fish. I mean, Elden walks over land at twenty-five feet, and <laughs> would. <laughs> You're still a little bit salty about that move in the back in the caverns, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. All right. So, assuming everything is being taken care of, everybody is feeling frosty and ready to go. The morning sun is bright and the clouds are few as you start your journey down the road. You pass a few smaller roads here and there that lead off to parts unknown as you continue your journey through the foothills. You look up and as you're wandering through, you see long streams of smoke that writhe like serpents through the sky. Soon, the tree cover and brush starts to increase and you come across an intersection with a signpost. This signpost notes the following. To the northwest is Aldenburg. To the east, Castle Frederick. To the south, Jonesburg. As, you know, you make note of it, and unless anybody decides to do something really very strange and throw me for a complete loop, I'm assuming we're all going to continue towards Castle Frederick. That seems to be the plan. But there... Where's that Kool-Aid I kept hearing about? Okay, fine. I'll let it I'll let it slide there, Siona. Go for it. Okay. So the the party continues on down the road. Uh, um, you know, obviously rains and everything have washed the roads and it's still a little you know, a little muddy, but, you know, the horses and the mastiffs seem to be handling things real well. And the hours pass by uh, fairly aimlessly. Uh, there's, you know, a few travelers again uh, that kind of keep to themselves. So, you know, nobody's really talking too much um, to people as they pass. Um, up along the road, you see in the distance, you see some smoke uh, billowing out from, from you can't really see what it is, but you do see it like uh, there is a fire up ahead. Uh, so black smoke is billowing up towards the east. Um, and as you get closer, you come up and you come across a small hamlet uh, just off the road. Um, in this small town, is in chaos. Uh, there are buildings uh, on fire. There's a barn engulfed in flames. There are there's smoke uh, coming out of several of the uh, of the uh, the smaller buildings. Uh, dwarves and gnomes are running around and screaming, while a brave few mount a a unforgiving defense against what appears to be a group of orcs that are rampaging through the hamlet. 
Uh, you, you see corpses littered around the area. Um, the orcs seem to be, you know, yelling and chanting and screaming in some, uh, what, a, what sounds like an orcish, what sounds like orcish. Ooh. Like I don't speak orcs, I don't understand that. How many orcs are we talking about? There are seven that you see. Where are we on this map? You are nowhere on this map yet. Because I have not put you there. But you're going to be coming up from the the southern part of this of this map here. You will see that there are buildings marked as they are on fire with this gimpy little flame icon on top of them. And give me just a second to put you guys on the map. Feel free to adjust your positions as you see fit. I've really got to get a better icon for my character. I changed mine, but it still reverts to the very first one I used. I can change. I can't change my portrait or, and my icon. I can only change them both. Uh, do you have a token that you want to put on the screen real quick, and I should be able to swap it over? I'll find one while we're while I have a chance. How come I can't move this? You should be able you, to. How you even add a token? So what time of day are we coming up on this? It'd be maybe just before noon. Did that fix the uh, token icon? Uh, his has changed, yes. Okay. Did we ever determine uh, advantages or come to an agreement on mounted combat? I, I don't think we've ever actually discussed it, and I've never actually bothered to look it up. We've hand waved, we've dismounted, and left our start wherever we start. That's kind of how I felt about it. My animal handling, animal handling is kind of low, so I probably wouldn't even try. So you come into the hamlet, and obviously there's chaos going. The uh, orcs are... Well, does anybody speak orcish? I do not. Language I didn't take. So assuming nobody can speak orc, um, as you're hearing them yell and, you know, cause damage and everything, you just hear this dark guttural and stuff like that uh every once in a while you hear what sounds like like a grmsh and you hear that 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 sound frequently enough to where it's you know sounds like you know either almost like a name or a it's obviously it's an important phrase because they they say it quite frequently Did you say there were um, NPCs running around? Uh, yeah, I mean they're they're small, you know, uh, villagers and like uh, they're they're n like gnomes and dwarves mainly. They're they're kind of fleeing for their lives. Uh, there were a few that mounted a defense against these orcs, but they they were dispatched and slaughtered where they stood. Any running by or anything? Think we could ask what's happening? Sure. Yeah, you you grab one uh, one of the uh, you stop them as they're running by, and obviously this 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 uh, gnome 
uh, looks up at you, uh, and, you know, Thongrim looks, you know, looking up at you and going, what, why, why are you, why are you stopping me? I need to go. These people are, they're, they're burning my home. What's going on here? How can we help? All of a sudden, these, we, minding our business, you know, having a happy morning, tending to our farms, tending to our work, our work, and these, this band of orcs just came in running and screaming and just started taking things. I mean, this, we haven't had a band of orcs in this part for, oh God, as far as I can remember, but they just came in and started t just stealing shit. He wouldn't say shit, but that's the best thing I could come up with. They're talking about Grumsh. Uh, it's, that's, you know, apparently this is how they pay homage to their god, best I can tell. But I, I, I've, I've got nothing left. I've got to go, or else they're going to kill me like they killed my brother. Hopefully you all run. You're just going to come back to nothing. So why don't you gather your friends and stand your ground? Have you seen these guys? What are we going to do? Throw sticks at them? They've already killed half the town. And the other quarter and the other half have already fled. How many of them are there? We've seen seven, best we can tell. But what are we gnomes and dwarves? Uh, there's only a few dwarves of us here. What, what could we do? You can fight with us. Stand beside us. Reclaim your town. By that he means you could pay us heroes to save your town for you. I'll show you what a dwarf can do. Charge. So, okay, so Thongram's doing that, um, but before he, <laughs> before he does what Thongram does best, who was the one who addressed the, the gnome to try to keep him to stand and fight? That would be me. I told him to gather whoever he could and stand behind us. Okay. Uh, roll me a persuasion check, please. And we will call it, since he is distraught and fraught and ready to run for his life, we're going to say it's going to be really difficult. Uh, we'll say DC 15. That sounds reasonably yes, difficult. Not for me. Okay. So, we get... This gnome looks at you and goes, You know, you're right. If I do run, there's not much else I can do. So, I will... I will take my... My... Whatever I have here. And I will try to stand and fight with you. But I don't... I don't know anybody else that would do it. So, you know, I'll, what the hell? <laughs> we'll do our best to protect you. Just do what you can. Let's reclaim your town. And then I pick him up and I throw him because he's a guard. No. <laughs> don't say it. I'll do it. I don't do it. <laughs> I throw him like a lawn dart. <laughs> One second. Hey, Eldon, what's your hit dice? My hit dice? Yeah. D6? Uh, yeah. Thank you. So 
So you, Burgle, the, the gnome, has joined the fight, and he is a wee little person, and he has a... Um, he's got a small-looking club that he's going to try to fight with. He may not do much, but he will, he, he will stand up with you in the fight. So, um, I am assuming we, uh, I'm hearing that y'all are engaging the fight. I believe we are. Then, by all means, let's start and roll initiative. Why do I have control of two? Who do you have control of? It looks like I have control of Burgell. I don't think you do. I just showed his name on there so y'all could see what his name was. Uh, you think all gnomes are the same? Dude, that's racist. <laughs> Not cool, bro. Not cool. Oh, you even have his uh, hit points showing and everything. Okay. I do. In case y'all decide to try to save him or not. I'll give y'all a little hint. Um, My initiative rolls are the worst game. Should get some guidance on that. If I have time to do an action prior to that. All right, give me just a second. Because this takes forever. So I assume there's a lot of people kind of running around in a panic here. Yes. Because of the way this is all sort of laid out, do we end up with a situation where we haven't drawn other enemies into combat until they can kind of see us? Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, we're gonna do our best to do like line of sight and everything. So I mean, these buildings and alleyways and all that stuff. So the orcs are going through, and they are, you know, kind of trying to take what they think is what they deserve. Um, you know, so they're going to be moving around and just kind of doing their thing until they see what appears to be a threat and then they may do something else. So if you guys could throw that gnome next to one so I get sneak attack, that'd be great. Where is G? Hey, Willie, you'll have to remind me to tell you that something later. We were talking about yesterday or day before about the possibility of, of targeted attacks and how that might work. It was kind of an interesting idea that you might be interested to see what you think. All right, I think we have everything ready to go. Uh, so Corin is up. Um, so uh, Ash, uh, let me see where he is, and if if you get to him. I would give you a surprise if, if he was if you were ahead of him in combat and you are not. I am. Corin is, however. So what do I get out of the surprise? I'll give you advantage. 
All right, I will move here, and I will take a shot at that guy. All right. Once I find my character sheet, I, my, I re had to refresh the browser, so my sheet got closed. That is a... Not, go ahead. Well, that's, not, that's not very good. That was still a hit. I think. Hang on. Wait. What? I think it's a hit. That was a 16, right? Yes. Yes, that is a hit. Okay, so it's a measly 9 damage then with my arrow. So after that, I'm going to... Let's see... Just bonus action dash back down to here. And my turn is over. So the orc that just was impaled with a with a arrow, you know, has now turned around and realized that you guys are there and he screams loudly in orcish and you hear some you hear some responding yells. And this guy turns around and comes comes at the first thing he sees, which is a little minotaur looking guy, and attempts to strike and hits with a great axe. Hits for 22. And grazes off and does a measly five damage. So this orc way up here heard something loudly uh, coming from the south here. And let me check his speed. All right. And he comes running down 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 to see what the matter is. And you guys are way far away. I'm, one, I'm wondering if he could see you over a hundred feet away. He probably could. From yeah, a man, straight line of shot. What time? what time is it? It's you know mid, you know right before midday. Then yeah. yeah, I'd say he'd be able Isn't to see you. Is there a lot of smoke anyway. everywhere? I mean, things are on fire. There's chaos. I mean, he's he sees things down there, and he'd heard. Um. So maybe he wouldn't necessarily be able to see you directly. So we're going to say, I'm trying to de debate on his bonus action of aggressiveness. And I, I would think he would be able to move towards, and it says towards a hostile creature that it can see. And, and if he can't see it, we're going to let it pass for this this round. But he... do perception check. That is a grand idea. That is a wonderful idea. And that's off, uh, wh which one? What's wisdom. Wisdom, that's right. So it's just a straight D20. Now I think all is, all is well according to this orc. Thongram. All right. I am going to, having sh sloughed off a uh, great axe attack, I'm going to say, let me show you how it's done. And show him you did. Ah, crap. I meant to rage before that. All right, I'll do it next time. You can still you can still do it. You just don't get the dan. Bonus action rage now. Damn! Wow. So, once again, you have shown this guy how it is done. Would you care Show to tell us how he did? I like what you got. 
Boo. I'm gonna go across the guts and sort of spill all his entrails out across from him and leave him sort of dying there, clutching his own entrails. This is for the dwarfs! And then I will, remembering that dwarves have been attacked, become very angry for future turns. Well done. And move right here. Now I'm done. Cool. All right. All righty. So this guy here, hearing the yell and seeing what's happening down to the south, one, two, three, four, five, six, starts raging and running towards you, and he can see you and will try to, one, two, three, four, five, six, uses his aggressive uh, trait and moves his movement speed towards you guys. He sees this dwarven guy covered in what looks to be some dark orcish blood and he will he will throw a javelin towards your general direction hopefully into you he says in orc i will get hit and you will take eight piercing damage as a javelin. Four piercing damage. You will take four piercing damage. You will take two. Pi <laughs> four piercing damage due to your rageaholic skills. And that orc just screams in victory as he actually hits you. <laughs> he yells. Which brings. Another orc. Who is a little further up. This orc comes five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Comes running around the building corner seeing what's happening. One, two, three, four, five, six. Runs closer to the fray and with his javelin might also flings it. Let's see, what is this? 120 feet. He's going to fling it towards um, towards Thongram as well, because that's what this orc yelled about. Alas, the, the, the javelin seems to have gone high and hit the, the table behind, you know, several feet, several feet behind, uh, behind Thongram. You missed, you bloody orc! Alright, so, another orc. Uh, 15, 20, 25, 30. Comes running around the east side, around this building, spying the... <laughs> The the dwarf that he heard yelled about, uh, and, and gets close enough to throw his javelin, one of his javelins, at him, treating, trying to treat Thongram as a pincushion. But this one flings and goes past him and lands into the building, um, right here, thwunk, right into the wall, bringing Siona into the fray. Okay. I want to cast Tunner's Mark on that one that's closest to us. Okie dokie. And I think I can close. And then I want to just swing at him. <laughs> Make it happen. Oh, 18. Uh oh, 
<laughs> well, all right. Anything else? That's it. All right. So this guy, seeing his his fellow orc die in battle, be dispatched as the weakling he was, moves forward and takes his great axe and his axe and brings it down onto Siona. That is a hit. A hit. Yell out, you're not as strong as you think you are. It is no longer a hit. Well, he's looking all confused, like, what the hell happened here? I laugh at him and say, thanks, Raz. I've got you, fam. So it's Burgle's turn, Burgell. The the gnome is looking awfully unsure of himself, and he's going to stay. He'll move forward tr with with you know a little bit of um, fear in his eyes. He will get within 30 feet of him, and he's got some, he's got some rocks that he's, um, that he's picked up, and he's going to use these rocks, and he's just going to fling them as hard as he can, um, at this guy. But he doesn't come anywhere close. But it's the attempt that matters. She's like, did I do good, guys? And is very disappointed when nobody responds. Raz, you're up. Uh, seeing that Fergal is about to walk right up into a trap I go up here getting in line of sight of this uh, this one coming up through the alley and I wave a tiny feather in the air and I say what are you trying to do make new orc and I guess Hitty's laughter all right And it's hilarious. All right, so he is just... He is laughing his tail off, doesn't really know what's going on. And with my bonus action, I will whistle a little tune and give some inspiration to, uh, to Thongrim. I'm going to whistle the Sanford and Son theme song. Just kind of jam. Boom, 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 boom. boom. <laughs> All okay, right. I'm done. Cool. Where is this guy? This guy's way up north. So he's seeing, surveying what's happening. And well, from back, way back there, flings a javelin in Siona's direction. Probably should have gotten a little closer.
I just bring my shield up and knock it away. Using his aggression, moves a little closer and takes cover behind this tree here. Gabe, Eldon, whatever your character's name is. Okay. Um, well, Eldon wants to move. Make sure I'm in, keeping everybody in range. Um, when I'm doing the ruler, does everybody see me do the ruler? Yes. Um, <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. Not really. Um, I just want to get within... I have to get within 30 feet of... Our first... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Someone making an adjustment there? Yeah, I just realized that... More yeah, thirty feet. It was thirty-five feet for my guy. Is that your range too? Yes. Anyway, um, and then I will cast. Hmm. I will start with the usual bless. Kidoki. If I can get that to go, and. I will cast it up a level and include the little Nomi guy. Who's your Nomi now? Okay. That was gold, folks. Yeah, it was great. Um, And that will end my turn. Okay. Corin. All right, I'm going to move up to here. Draw my bow, and I'm going to take a shot at that guy who's threatening Siona. And I'm going to roll my 1d4 to add to that. That's a hit. So that is 15 points of piercing damage straight to his chest. Well, that definitely hurts. He screams back in anger at you. Ow. I shrug my shoulders at him like, eh, whoopsie, and end my turn. So going way back north here, the orc who couldn't really see, is now hearing all the orcish screaming, comes running down, and using aggression, comes down this far, and attempts to throw a javelin at the one immediately, th uh, Siona, who's immediately threatening his buddy for 13, and it whiffs past. Thongram, how do you respond? I'm going to let's see. Uh, 
I'm gonna move up here and attack this one. All right. That is a hit. This guy is noticeably bleeding, a little angry, kind of hurting, but still on his feet. I have nothing else to do. Well, then we shall move on. Does everybody get bonus for flank? Or is that just a rogue thing? Well, we said, we, the thing we said it was if you're, you know, here and here, well, oh, I, they, I, would, I, they would get advantage. Correct. It right. had to be on opposing sides. Right. Oh, man. Should have moved one up the other way. I could have had me in that. So speaking of flanking, this guy. Oh great! Thanks. Gonna run up. Oh no! I I'd remembered. And we'll take his great axe and attack Lady Siona. Ask flanking questions on your turn, not the enemy's turn. Right. <laughs> My guidance. It's Although working. technically we're all going at the same time because we all have 11s. 11! Anyway, that's a miss. But he's sitting there snarling, looking at you with his beady eyes and his pointy teeth. And his breath smells like really bad. And you suffer it. So this guy that had hideous laughter... I do it at the end of his turn. He's. You make really good questions. Uh, do, 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 do. At the end, at of, this, end yeah. of each of its turns, and each time it takes damage, yeah. So otherwise, he can't really do. He can't really do anything, can he? Can he move? No. No, he's this turn, right. Yeah, he's just. Out. Yeah, he just can't do anything. So wisdom. Saving throw. And laughing, he continues. I'll be here all week. <laughs> Siona. I'm going to take overhand swing at this uh, troll to my left. Orc. Whatever. Orc. From Orc. That is a hit. Fifteen. A debilitating... Oh, bonus action. Move my 100 mark to him. Crap. Still nine damage. So... <laughs> All right, so nine kill him? Nine damage still kills him. So bonus action. I'm going to move it to this one on my right. How many bonus actions you trying to take here, Lindsay? <laughs> well, you just said that nine kills him, so she I don't is, need the six. Yeah, I forgot to do it. <laughs> but I forgot to do it. So now I'm not trying to retroactively do something. I'm trying to proactively do something and move it to the one on the right. <laughs> I was going to give it to you anyway, but jeez. <laughs> just give I'm it just now. saying I'm trying to not break the rules. I know. What rules? We've got a loose set of them as we go. All right, let me move All the right. hunter's mark. <laughs> your forgetfulness serves in your favor this time. Dead. Dead, dead. Which one is that? And boom, he's out. Uh, anything else on your turn? That is all. Okay. I mean, I'll turn around and face him, but that's all. And I'll take this chair, and this lamp, and that's all. <laughs> and that table. 
So Burgle, who has been encouraged by the turn of this, the, the, the way this, this fight is turning, is going to move up and attempt to beat this one with a stick because he has gone from fearful to just overconfidence and attempts to hit this guy with a stick. And the orc swing. And he hits him with a stick. For three damage. Is that the one that's got laughter on it? It is. Then that would be a crit, so it gets to roll again. Ooh. I believe that's what happens from his incapacity. I'm not. No, let's see here. I'm really, I'm willing to go with it, but let's see. Did incapacity just roll the crit, lower the crit number? Well, I think it's kind of like a sleep. Maybe yeah, it's not. free if he's within five feet. Nope, it's only that's paralyzed, not incapacitated. Oh, is it not? Okay, so it's just advantage. Yeah, not even advantage technically, but he is prone, so he gets advantage because of that. Yeah, yeah. So not a crit. Incapacitated just means you can't take any actions or reactions. Yep. All right. Well, good try. But laughter does make him fall prone, so you do get advantage on the attack. Which didn't need to resave. Yes, yes, that save. I will have you know that is three saving throws in a row that I have failed. So you're getting them back in spades now. Yeah, from one d fours. You still owe me. <laughs> Show me what you got. Show me what you got. Okay. Um, Siona, did you hit the one to the right of you? Or no, you just moved your hex to it. Your hunter's mark. Yeah. Proactively, mind you. That's right. If you're incapacitated, can you not... You're cutting out on him. If you're incapacitated, does that mean you, the only saves you can do are against being... Well, just means you can't take actions or reactions. That's it. Um, for for the length of this spell, right? So you're still concentrating on it. In it a concentration? Yeah. yeah. So it is up to you, Raz. And while and while I'm concentrating on that, I whisper horrible things to the orc in front of me. Okie dokie. Oh, 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 and he gets to run away from me and see Ona. So nine damage. And cue up the, this is, does this, this causes uh, opportunity, right? Opportunity yes. attacks? Yeah, that's what I thought. Moving, moving into his reaction. Uh, go ahead and roll them. I will definitely take that reaction. You miss. Siona hits. Wait, wait. Oh, no, he's not. Six. And takes another seven. Thirteen. Thirteen, yes. I read the Hunter's Mark as soon as you said it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 22 total. Yeah. That guy's hurting badly. Is he different than the other? In, in what way? I mean, he, do all the works look the same to you, man? What is this with this racist <laughs> stuff coming from you? We just talked 
What about this guy? <laughs> Anything else, Raz? Uh, with my, my... No, I'm good. Alrighty. Orc from the north. And then... I'm going to... I'm going to get rid of the one that's dead. He's going to take his place for aggression and hit with a great axe towards Siona. And miss. Elden. Oh. Elden is going to support. Lend some support to his kin and I don't know if that's the right word. Um, and call sa down the sacred flame on the um, laughing orc. All right. He can or cannot take that save. That was, yeah. He, I guess, yeah. He still gets to save. Yeah. Why would you waste that on a guy? I could sneak attack. He saves. I guess he's riling around on the ground and manages to miss. The saying, not, yeah, whatever. So, yes, he saves. And then, going to move. Behind. Out of sight of the guys down up the road. And that's it. I'm guessing I have line of sight to see on the right from there. I'd say yes. Okay. Might argue that you still have line of sight from that guy in the north too, but half cover. I'll give you plus two on your AC from attack from him. If he attacks from that position. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's about what I was looking for. Mr. Rogue. Can I, what is this? That's his hit points. No, it looks like a wagon or oh, something. Wagon. Is it... Can I get, you know... Can I get in melee range of this guy? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's something that's up to block me, so. Then yeah, I yeah. want to put my short bow away, move here, pull out my sword, and stab him. And the way I envision this is you you scramble on top of this, this wagon there, and you're, you know, you're right on the edge of it, and you're like, you know, right on top of him. Yeah, I'm just going to be like, you know. Short storage aiming straight for his neck. Good thing I had advantage on that one. Yeah, I know, right? It's, it really but, worked out well for you. Now, granted, the building behind you and beside you is on fire, engasing, <laughs> encased in flames. That's fine. I, I stab him for 16 damage. He's, you're also blessed. Uh, I have 17 hits. Yeah. He's still laughing about it, though. Well, hilarious as that was, I'm going to bonus action dash and get back down out of here. Away from that fire. And he makes another wisdom save. He failed it. He, got a, he rolled a nine. Oh, uh, I just saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll take another one. <laughs> no, I, I didn't see do that. I'm scrolled up. He managed to waste his wisdom save against my... I know, my right? Sacred flame. All right, so orc, the orc, the this one. Hmm. 
That one is thinking far too much for his stat block. So he's going to run forward. I'm going to get rid of this dead body. I'm going to run forward and, uh, you know, with his axe overhead and try to bring it down on top of Thongram's skull. And that'll hit. Four, six. Thangram. I will return the favor. Wait. Uh, yeah, now I'm stuck there. All right, well. And three to you, Siona. That was hit Thongram picking half damage. Yeah, I do. that's what I checked. I wish it would I automatically know. take that into account. Here. If it, Here. If it knew. I'm over there. And get all flanky with him. Of course, Thongram, you can always reckless attack and get all the advantage you want. Yeah, I keep thinking about that, but it doesn't apply to the turn after the turn you use it. That's not. It's, you use it right then. Does it? It's not how it reads. I would prefer it. When you make your first attack in your turn, you can attack recklessly. Doing so gives you advantage on all attacks that turn. I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think it's going to matter either. Oh, well, no, it might. Hang on. You're almost pulling rogue numbers there. <laughs> I was going to say, is, is 25 the new record? I think it. that's one of the am largest. I the, am, I, am I the leader in the clubhouse? <laughs> I think you are. I, I, might, I do 46. I think I'm going to multi-class. Now, after all, screw it. <laughs> well, the orc is still alive, but he has taken severe damage. He is a bloody mess having that great axe just, light, you know, just slash through him. I mean, he's just bleeding all over the place. I uh, will do nothing else. Okie dokie. So the guy who ran away is charging back and is going to swipe at Siona. And miss. Damn. So, the guy, the orc, who is laughing his ass off on the floor, is going to try to make another wisdom save. <laughs> <laughs> and finds it hysterical. Yes, everything's coming up Millhouse. Siona. Of course, that laughter is protecting him from the flame. Uh, Perhaps the garden gnome will start to melt here recently. <laughs> um. Spin around in a circle and get them all. <laughs> I know, right? Do you have an AOE attack? I wish. That should I'm be a thing, like, that guy. you can spin around, but, like, it's disadvantage on all attacks or something, you know? I was just thinking about how that might work. Uh, which one are you attacking? Not that oh, matters. The Hunter's Mark. All right, yeah, he, yeah that's, that's a hit. Is he still fine? Like, is he still living? 
I can't remember if he took damage. Already. Oh yeah, he took he took like twenty two <laughs> damage the, the previous round. Uh, so with this additional, t- yeah, he took uh, nine psychic damage. Then he took uh, a walloping from your longsword, and he's going to take another one. Uh, however, you deem fit. I just want to slice into his collarbone, like overhand swing in between his shoulder and his neck. Nice. Well done. And that's a bloody and mess. And bonus action, I want to move my Hunter's Mark and turn and face the one on my left. You have turned left like in NASCAR. Anything else? That's it. Urgle, with a newfound overconfidence, continues to swing down his stick on the laughing orc in front of him. With advantage. Doesn't need it. I'd roll it twice anyway, just for the hell of it. He's also blessed, I mean, even so, so it doesn't matter, though. He's, he's having fun over there. Take that! Ha! Where did my home? Roll, always roll twice in case you get a 20. Oh, uh, that's true. Burgle's over there bludgeoning this guy with a stick, just beating him in the face. He is a bloody pulp, but he's still laughing. Still laughing. Raz, would you like to cure that laughter? Did you roll a save? Did you roll a save? Oh, did I roll a save? I did not roll a save. I bet on I won't his not. Orcs turn you did. Not, no, no, hey, look at that. He did it at the end of the damage, so he is no longer laughing. Oh, anytime he's damaged, he gets a save as well. Yes. Sorry. And actually, if you read it, anytime he gets damaged, he gets advantage on those saves. Just read that. Ah. Uh. Oh well. I don't think actually it mattered. And, no. no, you're rolling terribly for him. It would have mattered last time. Oh well. Either way, Raz, you're still up. I climb up on the cart here and say, my f- friend wasn't done beating you! And I start stabbing with my rapier. Well, I'd say you you didn't have advantage, but it doesn't matter. So just as he stops laughing, he catches his breath and he stands up only to receive a rapier to the eyeball into the pointy, you know, the pointy part goes right into the thing and the guy just can't catch a break and falls over dead. And just just like the big brother who gives the little brother the controller that's not plugged in, I go, good job, little buddy, you did it! Yay! For Blungen Bob! Which you don't know what that is, but he's yelling it anyway. Yeah, for that thing you said. And I'm done. <laughs> All right, so the orc shifts shifts around and will attack Siona again with advantage for 21. Six. Ooh. Ooh, that hurt. Ooh. Elden. So, if I move up on someone that's flanked left and right, does that give me the advantage too, or do I only get advantage if there's someone opposite me? Only someone opposite. Good try, though. (laughs) Just wanted to check. 
What's uh, good for the goose is good for the gander. I just don't think I have. What? That's what, what I was thinking, by the way. That's the wrong button. Um, because I don't think I can move far enough to get flanking. Anyway, so I'm gonna speak to the adder with my bonus action, and I'm going to come up here and attack, and let's see if it works. The orc sees it and is like, "Oh!" And he obviously reacts to this snake. Um. And so that should be my attack roll. That is your attack roll, which is a miss. I'm not blessed. Then. So, okay, well, um, that was it then. I liked it though. Good, good thought. I mean, there's some poison damage in there. Thing, you know, if he would have made it. Right, but now I'm standing next to an orc. With a head of a snake in my hand. <laughs> Corin. The buildings are just burning down around y'all. There's flames going everywhere. Just smoke billowing. It's just just a mess. And there's people running around. Fewer people because most of them are you know have made their way slowly out of the hamlet. By the way avoiding this battle that's happening in the middle of the street. All right, I'm going to draw my dagger in my left hand, run up here, and I'm going to shove my short sword into this guy. So, 17. Okay. So that is 17 damage. All right, he's hurting. All right, and then using my dagger, I'm going to stab the guy on the ceiling his left. For two damage. Yep. That orc just looks like he's holding on by a hair. He's... But he's, you know, taking all that he has to stand up and, and just seething with anger. Well, I'm going to continue to laugh at him and my turn is over. So that orc, looking at what all is around him, just screams. Not sure what he's more angry at, being stabbed, the snake, or all the other random damage that he's been taking. And decides to take his wrath out as best he can on Elden. He, with whatever strength he has, he... On me or the snake? Because the snake can be a target. That's a good point. High or low? Elden's short goes low. Alright, let's see. What was low? Was that for you or for the snake? Well, Elden's low and the okay. snake is... Okay, well then, you have been chosen. He's swinging low, huh? He's swinging low. And as he brings it down... He hits the ground. He hits the ground and just... The axe stumbles out of his way, and he just uh, it just all falls apart on him. And he, you know, he now no longer holds an axe and just looks despondent and falls to his knees. Does that negate the advantage for the for the other one flanking? That doesn't. Right. I'll 
I'll try and make this quick. Your blast. And inspired. Anybody else want to give him some random advantages? <laughs> Wait, he. Do you still have a. Still have a. A what? Didn't you do inspiration on. Oh, that, that doesn't last that long. Oh. Yeah, I only have, I only have 14. I don't think yeah. that's going to do it. It's not. It is not. So you did not put him out of his misery this round. Or was it, wait, is it a four or a six? You're, you're blessed and inspired. How do you get inspiration? You cast the film on them? Yeah, like... I, rem I remember an inspiration. Down. Well, that's what I was asking. How long does the inspiration last? Didn't he get inspired? Yeah. Oh, it lasts for com more combat, at least. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah oh, he's yeah, got inspiration. Like ten rounds or something. Yeah, he's got it. It's yeah. like ten rounds or ten minutes. It's, it's, it's still there. Yeah, roll it. Yeah. 1d2 or 1d6? 1d6. Uh, 19. 19. Yes, this this should put him out of his misery. Should. Yes. That is enough. That is enough to end him. I have two. Or is one the net one? Um. <laughs> For the so next he falls six to his knees, and we I swing basically right neck level, and just blah blah blah, bounce ahead down the cobblestones. Clean kill. And, and then let's see. So I moved one, two, three, four. All right. And I'm done. All right. So, Orc, the laughing Orc is no longer in. Initiative, Siona, you are up. I will bonus action move my hunter's mark to the one guy left that I see. And take a swing. That is a hit. 18. That is enough to do it, if you would like to claim your kill. Just slice his head off. Fountain of blood everywhere. <laughs> We're we talking like Monty Python fountains? Just mm -hmm. And I just push his body to the ground. I love it. That's awesome. Congratulations, everybody. I can suggest that the fires put themselves out. No? Yes? No? No? I'm here. No, that's a, that's a, that's a hard. If any candles were on fire, I can put them out with you know, press digitation. Just go press it. Didn't have that much power, because I don't think do like I can I can put out candles. Yeah. Or campfires. Right. And I was trying to think if there's any that even I if, if I don't I don't ever prepare it, but I thought there was one that I had, but it doesn't do that much power either. You could you could stand back here, Will, right? And mage hand off this bucket of water, mage hand buckets into the house, right? Ten pounds of water at a time, that's what's a gallon. 
and move time, it's probably still not quite. I mean, I guess we bucket brigade it as a team. Yeah, let's just uh, recruit all the. Are we, why can't we recruit onlookers? I mean, all the orcs are dead now. We think. Can we hear if there's anyone stuck in any of these houses? So, I mean, is there any screaming still going on or anything? Uh, most of it had, um, I mean, you got there in middle of the chaos. This battle has gone on for less than a minute. So as the, as y'all were doing this, I mean, this, this little hamlet only held um, like 50, 60 people. Let me check, let me check my notes on that. Uh, right at, yeah, so 60 people. Um, so I'd say those that had fled, I mean, you might be able to get, you know, five, maybe six people who are still around, um, including Burgle. But, I mean, most of the buildings are on fire around you. Um, so I'm not sure how long it would take to uh, to get rid of, uh, to squash most of it. But some of the buildings would be better than none of the buildings, I suppose. And you can't, you, we don't hear anybody trapped in any of them or anything? Hey, Bergel, is there anybody you know you're still living in any of these? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I think everybody got out, but, I mean... I suppose we should check. I mean, we are. I haven't seen. I haven't seen our leader. Uh, where is he? Yeah, I have. I haven't seen him. I didn't see him through all the chaos. I mean, he's. He lives just up north. Is. Uh, we we may want to check and see if he is 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 he's still there. His name is Ogier. Uh, he lives, um, and if you look at this building up at the top here, uh, north of the map, um, he lives up in that building, uh, where, you know, with a little walled area. Uh, you know, he, he, he's been good to us, and I would hate to see him, I, 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 I would like to check and make sure that he's still alive. But thank you, thank you for for helping us get rid of these these orcs. Uh, I, I don't know. We I don't think we would have been able to do it without you. We're, I mean, we're just such a, a small people. I put my hand on his shoulder and I say, "The, the power wasn't long." Can you reach his shoulder? I, I kneel down and put my hand on the shoulder. I'm in the other way around. I'm sure. I go, oh, that's that's Elden. That's short. It's like... What? <laughs> Never mind. I have taken negative one piercing damage. <laughs> Think I have that messed up. Yeah, I, I would say Thongrim could carry a, a, a barrel of water. He seems, he seems strong enough. Let's. Would that be the same. Yeah, let's say. What? What sounds reasonable? Eighteen was, seems. I mean, that's pretty hefty. But I mean, y'all are strong folks. Do you? Are those ability checks for guidance. Yeah, it's an ability. It's going to be a strength check. How many? How many gallons is in a? I mean, a, would a barrel be able to quench a lot of a fire? It would make quite a bit wet. I mean, what a gallon? Uh, how much does a barrel contain? Fifty gallons? Hundred gallons? I have no. I, I don't know the frame of reference. More than that? More than that? About a hundred gallons. How much does that weigh? Drum is generally like 55 gallons. Barrel is... Yeah, random Google says 42 U.S. gallons. 
Oh, are we talking like whiskey barrel size? That's what I imagined. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 40. The official barrel unit of measurement is 42 gallons. Because math is fun in a game like this, 42 U.S. gallons of water will weigh 350 pounds. So, we're going to say, how much do we think Thongram and Siona can deadlift? Uh, they can deadlift, I believe it's 600 pounds. They can comfortably carry their strength times 15, and they can lift twice that. All right. I believe that's how that works. I know, I know it's 15 times is your encumbrance. This sounds doable. All right. Well, I'm still haven't turned off my rage, I guess, because burning buildings has got me amped up. So advantage on us to check. I will give it to you. Well, and then my, I, I will help with guidance. Well, 23 would do it, because I, I was thinking a DC 18 would be the check. I will put a barrel on its side and just push it, if it's, got a, if it's closed. Oh, look at Mr. Brains over here. Hey, wait, wait <laughs> someone's, somebody's standing on a cart. We could just push the cart full of rain barrels. We still have to have some way to pour them in the building. I, I'm going to just run into this building barrel on my shoulder and pull the stopper out and just try and put some fires out. I will assist Corin with the rolling technique. You guys can the use your, right. your well thought out Those wisdom and like, smarter we're things. Not, we're not putting like whiskey barrels on the fire, are we? No. Well, I, guess we'll find out, I guess we'll find out when we pull the stopper out. <laughs> <laughs> so Corn, I figured me and you and Mage Chan, and we literally just used the Mage Chan to scoop up water and like pat it on areas of the fire on the ground. I don't know if I don't think it's actually. You better off just. I guess we could put it in our canteens and float them up there. Where was his friends, leaders, whatever's house? We can go to that house first. It was up north. This one. Well, I'm going to run up there as fast as you know I can run, dash, bonus action, dash, and see if I can tell if anyone's inside there from without going in. I yell out, is, is anybody, anybody inside? Uh, roll me a perception check, please. <laughs> Oh, I guess that house is empty. You don't hear anything. Uh, you don't hear anybody uh, outside of, over the flames uh, or anything. <laughs> You're combing the desert and you ain't found shit. How, how badly on fire is it? Well, I'll say the, the, the orc that was there had just set fire to the front of the area. Um the front door area so flames would be you know let's say here here towards the front of the house um the front of the building it looks like the rear side is relatively unscathed at this point though there is smoke here you know coming out of some windows this side and and this side While you're right. doing that, Thongram is managing to put out a lot of the fires that he is seeing in his building. And, and say that it is mostly smoldering at this point. I'm going to... Corn had a great idea, which I'm going to follow and take a barrel of water and roll it to this house on the right. And then pop open the cork and use Mage Hand to just attempt to scoop handfuls of water onto flame. Okay. So, handfuls, that would... I'd say, you know, uh, you, you would make slow progress. Uh, it's not a raging inferno, but it is, you know, you're able to put out some of those fires there. 
Um, so you're doing that. Thongrum um, had a great thought on this in terms of as he's inside of this building with the smoke, he's probably inhaled a lot of this. So we're going to say he's he needs to run. Uh, what what kind of check would this be to for say constitution check? Constitution. For constitution. Yeah, for smoke inhalation. And we'll say it will be a DC 12 if you succeed, nothing. If you fail, it'll be a 1D6 of damage. All right. Y'all both manage to be smart about it and have you know get get out without maintaining managing any smoke inhalation. All right, I'm gonna hold my breath and just charge into that building and get past the fire. Okay. For grins, do a DC 12 dexterity check, which should be simple for you. Well done. So you are inside the building and you're doing a search um, and you, you happen to see um, that there is a gentleman who has uh, been laid out by the smoke on the floor. He's barely moving. You have to assume that it is the, the leader that, uh, that Burgle was telling you about. All right, is there a, another way out of here, a window or something? There are windows on both the north and the south side of the buildings. All right, I will, I guess, that would, you know, go over to the one at the, where's he at, north or south? I'd say he's right in the, towards the middle of the building. All right, well, I will take one of something, either, I guess, a dagger, and I will throw it at the window to try to break it. Okay. Roll me either, I want to see, yeah, or what, strength or acrobatics? Your choice. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure which one would be best. I mean, it's that or an attack roll, but it's the same plus to the hit, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's glass, so it, they, you know, you'd have to like really just whiff it to miss. <laughs> so yeah, yes. all, everything I have is plus five, so it doesn't matter what I roll yeah. really. So, so yeah. doing that, I cast the message cantrip, telling I guess to say Thongrim that hey, I found leader guy, and I'm gonna try and get him out, and then I will try to hip them on my shoulder or drag him to the window then get him out somehow. I don't know if that's half on my shoulder or pick him up and push him out the window or whatever whatever it takes. Alright. So Thongram, how do you respond? I'm just gonna run off that way. And I'll run up here and I'll jump in this bucket of water. And I'll bounce out, and I'll just dive in a window over here. All right. Roll me a dexterity check with advantage because of the water. I think I said DC 12 earlier, right? So you've made it through the fire. Uh, let's see, can I see Corin? Yeah, you see him in the middle of the room. I mean, it's a fairly open layout. Right. I'll run over to him and then help him with the old guy. Or I'll take the old guy, whichever one. Corin wants to try to put some of these fires out. Sneak attack him. <laughs> attack the darkness. Kakai! I, mean, I think we're just trying to get him out of here. I, I can't like put this fire out. All right, let's All right. go, old man. So you pick him up, right. and are y'all both gonna run? I was dragging, just, yeah. dragging to that one thing and get him out somehow. 
I mean, he's a little man, so I mean, I'd I say a DC check of five when you're out through there. So as you're running through, you're sopping wet. We're going to do one more dex check with advantage for you because you're wet. And let's, you know, just to see if you make it through the fire unscathed. And you do because it was a DC 12. I am not fast, and fire is. What? Watch out, Corrin! The fire is fast! It's spreading quickly! Alright, I'm gonna go out through the window up here that I broke and try and find my dagger. Alright, you managed to do that. So you're coming down that way. Looks like Eldon has taken to running towards to, I'm assuming, do help or something. I heard it. I heard someone yell. If, are they hurt? Are you hurt? <laughs> We barely made it. I guess is the guy still breathing? He's breathing shallowly. So, I mean, it looks like he has, uh, from your untrained eyes, um, looks like he's inhaled a lot of smoke. And he's, you know, he's an older gentleman who's, um, uh, but, he, you know, he's barely moving. He is breathing, but Damn very it, shallowly. Quickly. Burgle Bur is running up in his little legs. You found him. Is is he alive? It. Uh, he's he's barely breathing. Uh, what 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 can we do? Guess we. Uh, try and help him heal, uh, medicine help. Am I on? Oh. You're the cleric, don't ask us. Right, well, we just uh, administer medicine or, and, 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 Okay. Is there a? So it's not a first aid feat, is there? Or no, there is medicine, medicine, right? There's yeah, a the medicine, medicine check. Skill. Yeah, the, the medicine. It, it's one that I haven't looked at very much, as far as like I have proficiency in medicine, but right. But in, I mean, in terms of that, there's also you know, I'd say at this point, it's as with any other damage. Um, healing or some potions or something probably would help in this situation. What's going on? Does he need healing? I, he does, he's breathing shallowly. Uh, maybe we could help his uh, his breathing. I I, I I don't know. I I, I reach my hand down and. Dump five points of lay on hands into him. As you touch him, it as you touch him, he takes a sharp inhalation as he's gasping for breath. And <laughs> what, a, what happened? What, who, who are you? As you know, Burgle says, it's like, Hoger, Hoger, you're, you're alive. And at this point, we will call it a session. What was his name again? The, the leader dude? I will, oh, jur, oh, gur, oh, O G I R.
Yeah. <laughs> it's nerd. <laughs> okay. So you guys have taken some big strides of becoming bigger and well-known heroes and helped save a town from from orcs and from mostly from fires. Um, you have saved an, an old man who is apparently the leader of a town, uh, Oger. He is, uh, you know, from what you have learned from Burgle, the, the gnome. So, um, this has been a good day. This is uh, your third day of travels uh, towards Castle Frederick. You, you decided that this uh, was worth your time to, you know, slay the, slay the orcs that were obviously r rampaging and pillaging the hamlet. So good job, guys, and gal. Yay! Yay! I heard level five and all of that. And you, you, need, you need to get your ears checked. Ouch. <laughs> Burn. Uh, it's only been two sessions, or maybe even three, since level four. That's not how our law of averages work on this game. <laughs> but you've made good strides towards that check, towards that gate. We probably may have gained, or will have gained, some renown, though. I would say, at this point, I mean, not that not, not that the word has gotten out, but definitely within this town, uh, you guys have made a, a, an impact, and I'd say the, uh, the round, yeah, you have gained renown. That will slowly make its way through the uh, surrounding areas. Until we murder all the priests. So, did we gain any equipment from uh, orcs or anything? Persons that they were carrying of any note? Not yet uh, fr from the orcs. They had not really gotten much. I mean, they are raiding the place, but they haven't... I mean, they, they didn't have much on them at this point. They uh, just had weapons and... Yeah. But... When we pick this back up, there there may be something uh, from saving the leader. Okay. No, I, yeah, I just was thinking, just making sure we do like the clean, the quick cleanup stuff, and set so we don't use any time next time worrying about that stuff. Yeah, I mean, we're we're going to assume at this point that you guys have saved. You you've saved uh, at least this one person. You've saved a couple of the, the buildings from completely burning down. Um, and we, and we'll figure out uh, the rest of it come next time. It's it. In my opinion, there's a cutscene a coming. Okay.